But when you see these signs happening, when you literally, Jerusalem surrounded with armies, fulfillment of prophecy, the building of a temple, a man claiming to be God and Savior standing in it, desolation coming upon Jerusalem, right? A fourth of the earth dying. Wars, rumors of wars, famines, no food, pestilence, disease, earthquakes all over the world, people dying everywhere. Everybody will know somebody in their family that has died from it. Everybody will work with somebody where they, they know somebody that has died. And yet their attitude will still be very blasé, very just, I don't know if I want to believe that. I don't know if I want to put up with that. Look what he says in verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You understand, when all these things are happening, when any Christian that's heard any Bible begins to say, whoa, this does look like an end time sign. Well, this is prophecy coming to life right now before my eyes. Our generation is seeing it, and I don't think we're gonna pass away until it all is fulfilled. Meanwhile, the rest of the world, they're marrying, giving in marriage, they're eating and drinking and having parties. They don't care. They're ignoring the signs, even in the heavens, right? And they're gonna be surprised when it all comes to fruition. Even then, even in this time, it will still be difficult to convince people that Jesus is God. They would rather willingly believe a lie. Many people will point to this in Matthew 24 and say, I don't think that's talking about the rapture, as most of you know. The coming of the Lord, although that was the initial question in Matthew 24, the coming, when it, what is the sign of thy coming? And he clearly tells us all of these things happening. And then he says, the son of man coming in clouds of heaven. Now you couldn't be any clearer than that, but people try to say, well, that's a different event. Uh, but 1 Thessalonians 4 actually debunks a pre-trib rapture view. Look at verse number 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He says, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning those that were saved that have passed away. Don't sorrow as other people that don't have any hope. Right? Why? We have something to look forward to. That Jesus will bring them back with him. Look at verse 15. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. This is a famous, we which are alive and remain, right? He said, except no flesh should be saved. If you're alive during this time, and you're standing on the earth, and people are dying for preaching Jesus, and people are dying by the pestilence, and you see this abomination of desolation, and he says, we which are alive and remain, unto the coming of the Lord. If you're alive at that time, that's who he's talking about here. If, you, if, if that's one of you, he is talking about you. He says, we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And he said, we're not going to go before the Lord brings all the Christians back with him. Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Listen, when people come to you, oh no, is the rapture in 2020? Let me comfort you with some words. You will go through tribulation first if you're saved. If, if this is the generation, you will have a hard time. You might lose your life, you might lose your friends or your family, but God will bring them back. And we will live forever, right? He says, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Jesus will bring you back from the dead. This life is not the end. It might be the end of your life in this world, but there's so much more to come. This is just the beginning. Amen. And in the beginning of sorrows, there's going to be troublous times. And if you go through it all, it says, we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. That's the rapture. That is the resurrection of the saints. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds with the Lord Jesus Christ and all the other believers that have passed. 
When somebody asks you, I would encourage you to take them to the Scriptures. And if they don't want to believe Matthew 24, they don't want to believe Revelation 6, they don't want to believe 1 Thessalonians 4, well, they're not going to believe anything else you show them. They might believe some crazy YouTube video, but if they're not going to believe the Bible, you can't help them. I would encourage you, and people get uh, distraught or worried. Is 2020 the end of the world? Is 2020 the rapture? Is it World War III? Take them to Matthew 24 and comfort them with the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. 